Let's talk about supports. This mask will need supports and this knife will need supports. Click on the knife, click on support and click on enable support. You have a choice between normal and tree. Should your model have predominantly curved or small contact surfaces, you will choose tree. So we will go ahead and use tree for this model. You want your supports starting at the plate and moving to the model without actually touching the model. As it is defaulted, your supports can be built anywhere, including on the model itself. For example, the supports could build on the nose and go up to the ear. We don't want that. We want the bed to the ear. So we will choose on build plate only. Let's go ahead and have a look at our supports. To do that, press slice plate. Here you can see our tree supports. These supports are pretty extreme. We can talk about the front and the rear, but let's look at this right here. I'm certain that my printer can handle this minor overhang and I don't need these giant supports. Looking at the threshold angle, 45 is pretty high. We are gonna go ahead and lower this to 25. That's a more reasonable starting point. Let's go ahead and re-slice this plate. You will see the printer has now excluded that area for supports and reduced the amount of supports on the blade right here to something more reasonable. That is because this angled section of the model here is within that 25 degree threshold. This virtually 90 degree angle needs to be supported and it is. Let's say you like the way the supports look for the rest of the model, but not this section right here. So we don't want to adjust the threshold angle because it will affect the entire model. We are going to go ahead and use support blockers. To do that, we will highlight the model and click right here on support painting. With support painting open, you will see Creality Print is highlighting in red the areas that fall below that 45 degree threshold in which Creality Print will apply supports. We are going to paint support blockers over these thresholds. However, the way it's defaulted, you are able to paint on the entire model. We are going to click on overhangs only. This means when you paint, it will only paint on the areas with these overhangs, skipping the rest of the model where overhangs are not present. I am going to use the circle tool. I am going to increase my pen size by dragging this meter to the right. You'll see the ball is now bigger and I'm going to right click and drag, right click and drag. You will see it's now highlighted dark red. That's a support blocker. Light red is supports, dark red is a support blocker. If I had left clicked, it would force supports by painting this overhang green. Let's go ahead and slice this plate with the support blocker here and the forced supports here. Turn off the support painting, press slice plate. Here you can see we have the supports here and no supports here. This is how support blocking works, how support forcing works, and how support painting works. Mastering this is what separates the bad from the good and the good from the great. Do spend time learning how to work with these features. Let's look at support painting and support blocking a little bit more over here with this mask. I do not want supports on the front of this mask. Click on the model, press R to switch to the rotation tool or simply click right here. I will grab this arrow and simply lean the mask back. Now you can see there are no overhangs in the front. To bring up supports, click on the mask and click on support painting. Here you will see support overhangs. Some slicers allow you to see support overhangs outside of the support screen. This may be a feature at some point in Creality Print. For now, those supports show up inside the support interface. These shadings indicate the areas in which Creality Print will be adding supports. We can raise or lower the threshold angle to increase or decrease the amount of supports being applied to this model. With the support interface open, this threshold angle is right here. 
and we can adjust it with a real-time visualization. This is a really powerful tool of Creality Print. It's very responsive and I'm really pleased with it. This is super helpful in helping you learn how thresholds work and making decisions on how to apply your supports using the automatic settings of Creality Print 5. Here you can see the results of raising that threshold and lowering that threshold. I'm going to bring that threshold down to 25. At 25, you can see it supports the eyes, the mouth, a little bit of the cheeks, and right here at the bed contact, and a tiny bit up here at the chin. Keep in mind that supports aren't only for printing. The main purpose of supports is to avoid printing on the air. The support gives the printer a structure in order to print on to create these things that would otherwise be printed over the air. However, it also provides stability. You can see this doggo here is quite stable with lots of bed contact. However, this mask is standing upright and will be extremely unstable, objecting this model to movement, which can create layer shifts or complete and total delamination from the bed, failing your print. Therefore, we may use supports that aren't physically needed to print, but will grab a hold of this model at different stages of the printing process to keep it stable and prevent moving as the printer does its work. Let's slice it and see what it looks like. Here you can see the tree supports grab a hold to this, builds a trunk up to here, grabs a hold of the eyes, and then grabs at the top of the mouth, and then grabs at the tip of the mouth. Looking at this model, you can see there's almost no support contact outside of the very base of the skull until the eyes. It's very likely that this model will fail before these supports grab a hold of the eyes and hold this model in place. This is where forcing manual supports with support painting comes into play. I will click on prepare, click on the model, click on supports. We will turn off on overhangs only and have a look at this model from behind. Using our scroll wheel, we will zoom in, we will reduce the pen size, and simply left click and paint some supports here along the edge of this mask, and here along the edge of these eyes, and slice again. Here you can see the results of our manual support painting we now have strong supports grabbing hold of this mask to help it stay put until the main tree supports grab a hold of the eyes, allowing it to stay put until these tree supports attach themselves to the model and begin stabilizing. Should you, should you be unhappy with where these supports are placed, you can simply go back to the support painting interface, press shift, left click, and trim these manual supports, for example, to avoid having them placed at the face of the model. You'll see they are still here behind the mask. Now you can see, having cleaned that up, the supports are not touching the front face of that mask. They are all along the edges and behind the mask, leaving the face of your mask clean. Now let's make a quick decision on support blocking. Let's say you are certain or fairly confident a portion of your model can be printed without supports, but Creality Print put supports there. Here at the tip of this mouth, I'm certain Creality Print can handle this overhang. Regardless, look where it is. It's behind and underneath this lip. This is not something that will be seen on the mask. So I can save the time and potential fail by eliminating this lengthy tree branch. Back to prepare, click the model, support painting, have a look for that little tiny marking showing where the support is being applied, right click and block it. Slice the plate and you will see Creality Print has now skipped applying the support to the underside of the mouth and we'll stop right here. This is really great. You can see how much better the supports are now. That giant branch is no longer there and you can actually get a better look at how it's going to support the eyes 
at the top and bottom, the mouth at the top, and of course the manual supports here along the skull. This is a great example of supports being used to stabilize a model. As the printer is constructing this model, you will see these supports aren't touching, but my manual supports are, so they're holding on to the model. As it gets taller, you're going to see these supports grab a hold right here to the upper portion of the eyes. That'll hold this model in place as it continues printing. Once it reaches the top, it's going to grab a hold again. It's then going to grab along the inside of the cheeks and the upper portion of the mouth. Now we have one, two, three, four, five points of contact holding this model put as the most difficult and unstable portion prints, which is the thin top of this model. Apply this thought process when slicing your models and you will have better success.